The diesel roared, black smoke billowed from the exhaust, and his arm stretched out, digging into the ground. Thomas sat on the seat, trying to stare through his tears as he continued to scratch the ground with the backhoe's claws. Twenty minutes of backhoe work and the hole was dug. His true love, Marisol, the only woman he had ever had any feelings for, was ready. Her grave was ready. Her lover's grave was ready. They deserved each other. The betrayal started just like any other. Quentin, call me Q, was the school bully, and she was the shy, quiet girl who blossomed at university. Thomas always loved her. Q had fun in high school. The story starts like any other. Thomas and Marisol were friends in high school and then went to the same university. And since they knew each other before they had a close friendship, the friendship grew into love. After graduation, both managed to find jobs in a city about an hour away from the small town where they grew up. Although the two worked hard and developed their careers, they never considered other potential partners. They felt that each of them had found their one true love. Two years after graduation, they were married in a lavish ceremony in their hometown. Four years after the wedding, Marisol started staying late at work and going out drinking twice a week. When Thomas asked if he could join her and her friends to socialize, she told him curtly that right now she needed to relax without him. Three weeks after he was last allowed to enjoy his wife's beautiful body, he had an early business meeting across town. Thomas decided that he would go home and make his own lunch instead of eating in the company cafeteria. This decision led to a series of disastrous events. A large pickup truck parked in the driveway horrified Thomas. The truck belonged to Q, the school bully who had made his life hell. Worse, at the company picnic the year before, Marisol had reintroduced them to each other, saying that Q worked on the loading dock and ranting about how big and strong Q was. Thomas was furious when Marisol gave Q all of her attention all day. When Thomas and Marisol got home, the yelling started. She embarrassed him, and he was mad at her for weeks. Marisol called him a baby and told him she chooses her own friends, and if he didn't like it, he could kiss her ass. For the rest of the summer, they hardly spoke at all, and sex was only a fond memory. Marisol talked to her mother, sisters, and friends, and was shocked when everyone sided with Thomas. Why couldn't they understand her friendship with Q was just fun? She never mentioned the caresses on the dance floor when they went out for drinks, the secret touches in the office when they thought no one could see. Q was her big, strong man. Thomas was her husband. They both held an important place in her life. Q could give her big, strong children, and Thomas could raise them into wonderful people. The second misfortune for Thomas that lunch hour was hearing the two lovers in his bed. When are you going to tell that nerd about us? I'm not going to. You'd be a terrible father. So I'm going to start having sex with him again and tell him in two weeks that I'm pregnant and that he's going to be a daddy. Well, I'll still be able to sleep with you, won't I? Every time you want me, you can have me, as long as you don't jeopardize my marriage. Why would you bother marrying that weakling? I'm still in love. I just don't respect him. Besides, he has the potential to make millions where you will always be a common laborer. Financially, he will surpass you. But you can rest assured, wherever it matters, you are my man. Thomas didn't immediately realize where he was until he was in front of his gun safe, holding a Sig Sauer P22340 caliber. He stared at the gun and shoved it behind the waistband of his pants. He pulled out the stun gun he had bought for Marisol. She immediately told him she didn't need a gun and handed it back, telling him with a nasty smirk on her face to try to be brave. He was brave, of course, so he climbed the stairs and didn't hesitate to enter the master bedroom. Marisol was over the edge of the bed, Q was on her ass, both looked shocked, and then burst into angry, cutting laughter. Welcome home, weakling, she's mine now. Move your junk into one of the other bedrooms when you get home tonight and fool around while I kick your ass every day like I did in high school. Honey, it's for the best. Don't make trouble and we'll find a compromise you'll like, I promise, smiled a pierced Marisol. Thomas shot Q in the chest. His body tensed. Q collapsed to the floor. He lay motionless, absolutely still. No movement, no breathing. If they had acted quickly and given him CPR, he might have survived. Thomas didn't move. Marisol looked at her lover and screamed. She turned to help him, but Thomas hit her with the stun gun. 
Marisol lost consciousness. Thomas realized that things were taking a serious turn and quickly came up with a risky plan. Bury the bodies. He covered Marisol's mouth with duct tape. Thomas used Quentin's belt to tie her legs together and her own scarf to tie her hands behind her back. Running out to the garage, he pulled out the plastic sheeting he used when he painted the house, wrapped Q's dead body in the plastic, and dragged the 200-pound man down the stairs to the garage. Thomas rummaged through the dead man's pants for the keys to the truck, backed the truck into the garage, and used the hoist to elevator the big man into the back of the truck. He hoisted Marisol onto his shoulder and carefully placed her next to him in the back of the truck. Covering the corpse and the unconscious woman with the debris left over from the recent repairs, Thomas drove the truck out of the garage and put his car there. The 40-minute drive to the countryside near the small town where they had spent their youth seemed like an eternity. Thomas was afraid he would be caught with a dead body in his truck and go to jail for the rest of his life. Finally, he reached the remote lot overlooking the valley that he and Marisol had bought with the money they had received as a wedding gift. The excavator he had rented to begin building the foundation for the country cabin that had once been their shared dream was parked and ready to begin work. The diesel roared to life and Thomas moved to the far end of the lot, away from the house, and began digging. The excavator had a feature called extend a hoe, which allowed the articulated arm to dig straight down 16 feet. When the hole was done, he walked over to the pickup truck, backed it up to the hole, and as he climbed out, he almost collided with the smiling face of Deputy Sheriff Bill Genoways, his closest neighbor and best friend. What are you doing, son? Bill asked. Thomas had passed out. Bill checked to see if his friend was okay, then peered into the back of the truck. He was shocked to see Marisol, and even more so to see the bastard Quentin. But he was even more shocked to see them both naked. Quentin was dead. Marisol was coming too, so Bill took out the makeshift gag and gave her water. Do you want to tell me what happened here, Marisol? Thomas is crazy. He jumped on Q and me and then shot Q. Is he okay? Marisol asked. Who, Q or Thomas? Q, of course. Thomas flinched and came to his senses as Bill splashed water in his face. And it's all set. They're lying in a hole with a bag of lime. Tomorrow I'll get my tractor and turn this piece of land into a vegetable garden. But today, we need somewhere to burn that pickup truck. Then I'll take you home so you can clean it up. Tomorrow we'll start digging the foundation for the cabin, and you'll call Marisol's cell phone and work number to find out why she hasn't come home. Two days later, when no one can find her, you'll file a missing persons report. Thomas was able to talk his way out of it. Oh. Marisol was alive when I put her in the back of the truck. I was going to scare her and then give her another chance. I talked to her. She didn't deserve a second chance, Bill said, 